<laughs> the Pixel Fold. It's finally here, and I think I do know one person who's super excited about this device. Yes, I'm talking about you, Mr. Mobile. But <laughs> before I digress, let's go ahead and focus on what we came here for this video. The Pixel Fold itself, and how it stacks up against the competition. So, let's jump in. Hey guys, Thunder E here, and thank you for joining us on this video. We'll be taking a look at the Pixel Fold and of course comparing it against the competition. Now Google has done something very unique here jumping into this market space. It's something that we didn't think they would but we're happy to see them in here and what have they brought with the Pixel Fold. Let's start off with the design and hardware. Now the Pixel Fold itself has a unique cover display, 6.2 inches. The aspect ratio is much wider. So when you're holding it, it actually looks and feels like a regular smartphone, 5.8 inches. But why is that unique? Well, I got to talk to the product manager for the Pixel Fold and he had this to say. Usable outer display and then open in and augment your, uh, your experience with this much larger display. But to enable that usage, we actually want to drive it really thin. And the key secret to that was really the, the hinge and the, and the hinge enabling kind of that capability to drive it thin. That absolutely makes sense, especially when you look at other foldables. Now I've covered a few on the channel, not as much as Mr. Mobile, but taking a look at something like the Oppo Find N2, which has a similar layout in terms of the cover display, but much smaller. And yes, it feels wider, but not as wide and not as comfortable as what we have with the Pixel Fold. Or even the Techno Phantom V, which is much longer and has that slimmer look to it just like the Galaxy Z Fold 4, uh, which has just a much narrower 23 by one by nine aspect ratio. That aspect ratio for the Pixel Fold really takes the cakes and allows you to do much more, which means your typing, usability is really, really comfortable. Now, the other aspect of this hardware is just the fact that this thing closes almost all the way shut. So the hinge is very important and you can see clearly that it's, you've got very little gap on this device. And just going back to the project manager, he did mention something very specific about that in terms of how that plays to the design of the Pixel Fold itself. We thought about really ensuring that the hinge components could be, you know, not in the way and ensuring that the range of motion would not be impacted as we drove it down thin and then balancing also that durability that, that I talked about. So in my mind, they've done a good job with the hinge. So how does that stack up against the competition, right? We have our Galaxy Z Fold 4, which is the market leader in you know, foldables in this category. And as you can clearly see, there is a huge gap, you know, right now. Pixel 4 wins in that category. And the hardware itself is very thin and unique. When you open it up, you're introduced to a 7.6 inch display. Uh, and it feels very natural doing that. Now with the Galaxy Z Fold 5, it is natural to open it up, but again, it feels a little bit different. The layout is different, the structure is different. So it's something that might be preference based. Now, on the other side of this device, we do have cameras. Both of them have triple camera setups with, of course, the Samsung going with the triple 12. Pixel has a 48, 10, and 10. But what does that mean, right? We've got a cover display we can use for viewing ourselves, which is something that, you know, you can do with foldables. You also have a front facing camera on that cover display and you have internal cameras on that. So let's take a look at all set of cameras on, on both devices and see how well they stack up against each other. Welcome to the camera portion of this video. Recording with the Pixel Fold and the Galaxy Z Fold 4. Both of them are stationary, and I'm just kind of standing here. I'm going to pick up both devices and walk around with it. And we'll use all cameras. Right now, we're using the rear cameras, the main sensors of these devices. And you're going to hear how I sound. This is from a distance here. And then we'll switch over to the front cameras on the cover display 
and then the internal cameras as well and nighttime photos all that fun stuff so let's uh go ahead so let's go ahead and pick this up Ooh, this is a bit difficult doing this and you get the idea so here it is picked up we're using both devices it is not easy to walk around with them but i'm just going to go up the stairs just drizzling a little bit so you get an idea of what it is like with the background lighting all that fun stuff as well as also sound and audio kind of walk around a little bit just kind of hop around a little bit and then uh let's switch over to the cover display cameras now with the rear cameras i'll shoot at 4k 30. now this is the cover display cameras I'm shooting also at 4k 30. it is drizzling out here um, and uh, I'm just kind of going to walk around as it gets a little bit wet and you know you can see around me and uh, let's see what happens if we can switch cameras now the Galaxy allows you to switch the rear camera to of course the rear camera while the Pixel does not option with the Galaxy um, but again this is the cover display and uh, this device shouldn't get wet but you get the idea so let's uh Let's move around here, go on some steps, and then try and get some food. Down the steps, here we go. Okay, so this is the internal camera for both devices. It is full HD. Um, I think one is 60, one is 30. Gotta check. But just showing you the quality of what you will get within the internal larger display cameras. And uh, yeah. Now, I'm sure you guys are wondering and trying to make your mind up here to who does the better job, right? Is it the Pixel Fold? Is it the Galaxy Z, Z Fold 4? I want you guys to leave your thoughts on that in the comment section. I will say though that in terms of video quality, the Galaxy does a better job and especially in low light, you can see just where it does a better job there over the Pixel Fold. And of course, the Pixel with the portraits are just really, really solid. Now, what about audio? One thing I've realized with foldables is that because you've got a bigger landscape to use, you've got uh, bigger speakers on devices like this. So for instance, if you look at, say, the Galaxy Z Fold 4, you do have two bottom firing speakers on both sides, so giving you a louder speaker system, similar with here on the Pixel Fold. So let's take a quick listen to how they sound and uh, we can decide. Now, both sounded really good. I think the Galaxy was a little bit louder and clearer. It does support Dolby Atmos, so that's something the Galaxy has to its benefits. Now, another thing we like to cover on this channel is, of course, gaming. And I'm not going to go into gaming performance because we know the Galaxy is running the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, and the Pixel Fold is running the, the Google Tensor G2 chip. Tensor is just does not perform as well as the 8 Plus Gen 1. We know that. That's not the issue, but it's just usability here. And I'll start off with just gaming on the cover display. When you look at both of these devices side by side, the Pixel Fold just looks much better in terms of just gaming performance. Now, both of them have 120 hertz displays, both internal and externally, so that's fine. But the Pixel Fold feels and looks wider, more comfortable, more room. Yes, the Galaxy looks nice. It looks more like a stretched out 21 by 9. If you like that, that's something you can go with. But I like the space that the Pixel Fold provides. It feels more comfortable playing something like Call of Duty. And then we open it up into the 7.6 inch uh, display. Now, both of them can open up to that display quite well. And, you know, uh, the, just both of them also have 7.6 inch display size. So you look working with the same display size for both of them. And again, it games pretty well. But again, these are foldable, which means you can do much more gaming-wise. Can you run two applications at the same time? That you can do with both the Pixel Fold 
and the Galaxy Z uh, Fold 4, where you can have an app on one side folded with a split screen, and on the other side, you're still playing your Call of Duty. And then you can go back and forth between the main display and the cover display for both of them. So I think that actually works out very well. But I do like the way the cover display works for the Pixel Fold, which means I don't have to open up and use that internal display uh, as often, I can start my gaming sessions with the cover display and hold it. Plus, just the size and thinness of the Pixel 4 really adds to that element as well. Now, you're wondering, okay, what about other features? What has Big Google brought and added to the foldable market that makes it quite unique? One of the things they talked about and showcased was the dual translation with uh, the Pixel Fold, where if you're using Google Translate, for instance, and you're going to different countries, so for instance, I am going to be heading to Korea later on this year, uh, and I can have my cover display showcase uh, translation for whoever I'm talking to, and then internal display showing my translation there, which is really cool too, so you don't have to actually kind of bend around and share your screen, you can actually have it in front. Sadly, I couldn't test that out, that's something that is still not available here at launch, but will be coming to the Pixel Fold. On the other hand, the Galaxy has a ton of things that Samsung has added to it. So, for instance, you do have, of course, you know, the ability to stack the apps. So whatever apps you have on split screen, you can actually have them saved on the side panel if you want that. You also have the ability to use the S Pen on the internal display, and that's something that's pretty big that no device can do other than the Galaxy Note, which is a Samsung device. So you have those added benefits there, but the S Pen isn't lodged, lodged within the device. You either have to have a carrying case or hold it with you wherever you're going. So at the end of the day, when I look at both devices and I ask myself the question, okay, which foldable would I go for? Now you guys know me, I use a lot of Samsung devices, but I have to say though, the Pixel Fold takes the cake here for me. Yes, its video quality is not what I would like, but the images are really solid and the screen size for the cover display and just the feel of the device really feels like a regular smartphone in terms of thickness, in terms of the way it holds in your hand, and also in terms of usability, which means I don't have to use the cover display as much as I need to, I have to just use it for when I want to. And that's also always the biggest thing that I had with the Galaxy Z Fold 4. Now, that could change when Samsung releases the Z Fold 5, and we will compare it to that device. But right now, the Pixel Fold has become that main um, a foldable device in terms of, of large foldables to beat on the market. You've got a nice cover display, you've got a nice internal display, you've got some really solid cameras. You don't have a lot of additives to software, which is what I was hoping to see more from Google and not just small implementations. So hopefully that changes. But guys, what do you think? After seeing this whole video, do you think the Pixel Fold is now the foldable to have, or do you think, no, it's still the Galaxy Z Fold 4 or whatever Samsung brings to the table? I wanna hear it from you. Leave your thoughts down below. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you wanna pick up anything up, use the links in the bio and enjoy your entertainment.